How's it going there everyone? It's Mr. Zano here bringing you guys a brand new Taboo Tattoo episode discussion. And for today's segment folks, we are going to be talking about the season finale of Taboo Tattoo guys. Yes folks, we are finally finished with Taboo Tattoo and I have to say I'm kind of glad we're kind of finished with Taboo Tattoo because of the fact that I kind of feel sorry for this series. I really do. I actually feel sorry for this series because it was very, very horrible in the way that they were choreographing the whole entire series, guys. I personally thought this series would have been better if they just tweaked it a little bit, you know? It's just my honest opinion. Because of the fact, I mean, come on. They didn't even finish off the villain in this episode. The villain ran away from the looks of it. And I'm here thinking, okay, wasn't the point of the... De yes, they defeated the villain. Yes, that is the point, but isn't she a threat and a nuisance to humanity itself? So, did she just run away in fear? Is that just it? Like, that's the uh, impression that I'm getting off from this this episode, guys. It's just that the villain ran away from the fight. Yeah, that's from the way it looks like it to me, guys. And what I find hilarious, guys, in this episode is that Throughout the whole entire episode, you know, we're getting involved with Professor Wiseman with this pure dialogue involved in the fight against Segi and Princess Adia, but it just kind of begs the question as to what is Professor Wiseman doing in all of this? How does he know about the tattoos? How is he involved more with it? You know, they didn't really involve that much backstory with Professor Wiseman himself, you know. I personally would love to see more Professor Wiseman, or maybe he might be a potential villain in the future too, guys. You know, it's just a lot of speculation for Professor Wiseman in this episode that, you know, it kind of leads his viewers as to, you know, come on. What more can this character provide that will make it more interesting? Because, you know, it was just giving small glimpses as to the information that he knows so much about the tattoos. He even created a virus for Segi in order to trigger the, t the tattoo that he has. And you're kind of wondering, wait a minute, how does he know about this? You know, they, they just don't give off that kind of information. You know, they even showed him in the first episode, but, you know, they kind of strayed away from him from the first. It was all the way to the last episode. So, I mean, Professor Wiseman, I mean, come on, you got to have been more involved in the series. But, you know, what can I say? That's just about him. You know, but you know, I'm kind of glad they kind of showed him because, you know, it could be a potential next series for a season two or, or stick along the lines of that because, you know, we don't know that for sure right now. But from the looks of it right now, the series is done. From the looks of it. I mean, the, the villain is done. We even get Izzy's. I believe now in this episode that Izzy is dead for one reason. And that reason is because of, uh, for a fact that in this episode, we see Izzy... Face off against Princess Adia with Tamaki himself. And Tamaki, of course, he helps finish, or I would say, stalls out Princess Adia with Izzy. But, but Izzy, on the other hand, she got stabbed in the, in the abdomen and she kind of bled out. So practically, that's just it. Izzy was done for. And that was, and it's kind of sad because, you know, Izzy was a very, I would say, a strong female character in this series to go, to go a long way, you know, from the first episode to the last episode. She was a fan favorite throughout the many viewers, but I'm assuming her character was, for her more, I would say, characterization, the death was actually inevitable due to the fact that the kind of fights she's been going through. And also, you know, for a fact that she's been facing off against Princess Adia too. I mean, Segi, come on, even lost in the first round against Princess Adia. But in this episode, guys, Segi was a, a grandmaster, you know. I, I gotta say, with Segi's character in this episode, it's like... It's like two sides of the same coin. Like the way they kind of characterized him in the episode was a little horrible, but that's because of the, the the kaiju battle that he had with Princess Adia was kind of like a little off-putting. I mean, it was interesting to look at the visualization of of the creatures coming out and and just actually fighting. But it's just that we just wish that the the uh, kind of form of the sealed would have been involved more throughout the series. Ilta Mesh, yes, she actually used that beastly form that she had in the series, but only Ilta Mesh and Princess Arya used it and Segi, yeah, that's about it. No one else has used that but just them. And it kinda of begs me wonder why didn't the other characters use that? Like did they have to unlock some sort of like special power in order to, to unlock that beast or, or death itself? You know, like I said, it it just begs the question as to how the series was being like I would say choreographed throughout the whole entire way. 
you know, and it kind of, it's kind of sad too at the same time. Like, the anime could have been better. It really could have. But, you know, but, I, you know, I can't complain because, you know, they did very well in the visual part. It's just that the, the story part was kind of like, it was kind of a little bit everywhere. Just a little bit everywhere, guys. You know, the villains were a little bit flat due to the fact that, you know, they were overly powerful. So there was no really character development through the villains. So that's what kind of also made the series kind of horrible due to the fact that, you know, Princess Arya, his own demise was that she was so perfect with her powers that Segi was actually a, a strong character that when they were the two beasts, Segi could take it down because he knew martial arts, which kind of made him stand out a little bit better than Princess Arya because of the fact that when they were as two giant beasts, it's like basically a them hand fist to fist combat. But you know, since Segi knows martial arts, it makes him the better man. Which Professor Wise kind of stated in the episode itself. And, you know, you're wondering as to what the... You know, it makes sense. Don't get me wrong. But it's just like, okay, wow, that was a twist. You know, that was just a twist. It gave me that WTF kind of look, you know. It's hilarious. Don't get me wrong. But, like I said, like, the, the episode was very, very quickly paced, too, at the same time. Due to the fact that, you know, we got Tom's actual ridiculous banter in the episode and Colonel Sanders banter in the episode too with Colonel Sanders going that stereotypical route of suicide bombing which kind of failed in a sense but you know I just feel like Colonel Sanders I, I feel like they just kind of placed him there out of random as well due to the fact that we went in the previous episode you know we get involved that he was Izzy's father you know it's just kind of it just kind of throws off the story like you know like it just kind of jumps the gun as to say, well, how did, how, how were they mother and father? They never explained that, you know, just all of a sudden they said that there is no hint or any speculation towards the, them becoming that kind of way or giving us viewers that kind of speculation. So it's just like I said, it's just everything just kind of went in like in your face throughout the whole entire time you're just watching this, you know. But like I said, you know, I feel like like the series could just be done just a little bit better, you know. I'm not saying it was horrible, horrible. It's just that it could have been done better. That's just that's just it. Like the series had potential to be something. Though even when it first started off, it actually was very well. But just you know, during episode twelve, you're here wondering as to why didn't they show any more of these kind of fight scenes through the later episodes that we've been show that they've been showing us. But and then it's only until the last episode, as as if to say that then the final episode they should just have a kaiju battle, and that's the grand scheme of it, you know. Or maybe because they don't want to use the same overused theme in the majority of other animes where they fight two giant beasts. And they didn't want that along. They wanted to focus on Tattoo's powers. That's the kind of impression that I was getting at with these episodes. But like I said, guys. The uh, studio kind of did it in a way that, you know, Segi had to win through willpower. Will. And that was basically the, the bulk of the episode, you kind of say. You know, you know Blood... BB himself was actually in the episode, but you know it was more along the line as to like kind of like I would say giving off and giving off Izzy a, a reasoning for her life, you know, as to say that you know she finally she's finally close to BB, and that was basically death itself, you know, which I thought was kind of hilarious at the same time, and a foreshadowing technique too. But that's it for the episode, guys. You know, there was not too much to talk about. You know, hopefully if they do make a second season, you know, at least it would be a little bit better. And if they do bring back a villain, hopefully it'll be a better villain than the villain that it was here. Because for a fact that, you know, this villain was very a flat character. There's nothing really much to talk about for this villain, you know. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought about this episode, guys. What was your favorite scene throughout the whole entire series? Did you guys think the episode actually ended off in a very well-mannered? Or did you guys think it was horrible, as a lot of many people were thinking about? You know, let me know down in the comments, guys. And who was your favorite tattoo power itself, guys? Like I said, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. But this is Mr. Zen. Oh, wait, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and share if you guys enjoy my content, by the way. But now, as always, guys, this is Mr. Zen, signing out.